Sima Mizra was the person featured in the film Alan Bates versus the Post Office. She was one of the original Post Office 39, uh, part of that original group of sub postmasters and postmistresses who were convicted of theft, false accounting, fraud, because of the computer system horizon, which suggested that because money had gone missing, it must have gone missing um, fraudulently, and that the postmasters and postmistresses had a duty to make good the shortfall and must have taken it. So she pleaded, she was forced to plead guilty to six counts of false accounting and was found guilty of theft. She was tried in a crown court and sentenced to 15 months in prison when she was eight months pregnant. She was ordered to pay compensation of £40,000 to the post office uh, just short of the £70,000 that she was accused of having taken. She served four months in prison. Uh, actually, 4.5 months in prison. And she's, uh, today, she was asked whether or not she accepted the apology produced by David Smith, who was very briefly in charge as the managing director of the post office uh, in 2010. Not a very illustrious career, it seems. And he said that uh, he, um, what he, uh, so he'd, he'd said, brilliant news, well done to the people who had trapped Mrs. Mizra. He says that uh, the apology was poorly thought through. And or, or, or rather, his statement was poorly thought through. His email was poorly thought through. And she ha hasn't accepted the apology that he's offered. Uh, he says that, uh, she says that he should have apologized to her 10-year-old child uh, on because they took his mum away on his birthday. She was then sent to Bronzeville Prison. And there's no, you know, she can't get that time back. And she was forced to give birth to uh, her second child with a, an electronic tag on her foot. He says, David Smith, uh, this man who seems to have been caught with his pants down, uh, says that uh, sort of says that he was trying to that the message, "Brilliant news, well done," was for his team, and that he was uh, trying to give them encouragement rather than. Uh, boasting or gloating about the punishment of Mrs. Mizra. He also defends the Ismay report as a genuine report rather than a cover-up, and yet the person who was conducting the Ismay report says that he was only required to present one side of the coin to defend the post office Fujitsu, the Horizon software. And the, uh, and, and at the same time, he, that's David Smith, and uh, Sir Michael Hodgkinson, who was the chairman from 2003-2007, insisted that the system, they were told the system was robust, and Hodgkinson particularly didn't do anything to check this. Well, you know, why, why would anybody accept the apology from a bully who's been caught red-handed in the playground and who, who who looks as if he's goading on this this um this aggression these people are monsters utter monsters and it's it's very difficult to it's very difficult to sit back and try as hard as possible to work out what they actually thought they were doing. And the court concluded that the Horizon data in 2019 was unsafe, was not reliable, uh, that there was no basis for prosecutions, that the convictions were quashed. Surely that was the point for David Smith, for Hodgkinson, for Venels to come forward and say, 
we're really sorry. Why does it take uh, more more years before they're finally forced into a position where they issue some sort of half-hearted, feeble apology? This isn't about the reliability of the Horizon data. This is about the reliability and responsibility of human beings to other human beings. And these individuals who've been given power, who've been given such enormous sums of cash to do the right thing, clearly are incapable of doing the right thing. Even now they're incapable. They're wriggling like worms on the end of a hook. And all I think anybody can have for them is contempt. Uh, whether a prosecution against these people is coming or not, it doesn't really matter in a way. What matters is that they have been aided and abetted by our system for so long. This is a judgment not on... This is a judgment at this moment. It doesn't have to go to a court. This is a judgment at the moment in full view of the inadequacy of our system, of the inadequacy of the post office. Why are we surprised today to learn that the Chinese factory somewhere has been making counterfeit stamps? Why are we surprised? Because the post office is riddled with corruption and who cares? And as for that counterfeit stuff, and the idea that the person receiving the letter should be punished and should be made to pay five pounds for uh, receiving a letter with a counterfeit stamp on it, this again is about the absurdity of our system. The same sort of system that is punishing victims of trafficking by sending them, by trying to send them to Rwanda uh, as a deterrent. There used to be, when the post office started, the person who would pay for a letter was the person receiving it. And they would pay the cost of postage. The cost of postage is the cost of a stamp. If the stamp happens to be faulty, if the stamp ha happens to be fraudulent, if the stamp happens to be missing, you pay the cost of postage. You don't pay some penalty as well. What a completely ridiculous organisation, Royal Mail and the Post Office, and I joined the two together because that's what they should be, have turned out to be, with the connivance and the encouragement of the nasty people who are running the ministry and government. Hollingrake is one of them. Nasty, vengeful, spiteful, horrible, immoral individuals. Nothing more needs to be said. But I'm sure I will say something more. I'm sure, I, I'm sure it's not possible to restrain myself or for other people to restrain themselves. When we look at this nastiness, it's impossible to stay silent.